In this quick tutorial, we are gonna take a look at new quizzes in Canvas. Again, this is a general overview video. Check out the links below the video for more information on how to ask specific question types inside of new quizzes, how to migrate old quizzes to new quizzes and more. I'm inside of Canvas and I'm inside of one of my courses right now. And I'm gonna scroll down on the left-hand side and I'm gonna click on the quizzes option. So quizzes are a way for us to assess students and we can ask a bunch of different question types. In the spring of 2021, Canvas is moving away from classic quizzes. So for us, when we click this plus quiz button to make a new quiz, there's gonna be a pop-up here that says, do you want to make a classic quiz or a new quiz? If you're new to Canvas, just go to new quizzes and press submit. If you're an experienced Canvas user, user you may wanna to continue to use classic quizzes, which is okay, do note that you can migrate old quizzes to new quizzes. And again, you can check for that information below this video. If you're tired of seeing this pop up come along, you can also click to remember my choices for this course and move on. I'm going to go ahead and press submit so that we can set up our quiz. Now with new quizzes, there is a front page we have to fill out. And then once we click save, then we're going to see the place where we can ask all of the quiz questions. So this is just some general information about the quiz. So here is where I give the quiz a name. I can do total points, although I can change this later depending on what kind of questions I make. As I scroll down, I'm not gonna mess with the submission type at all. I'm gonna continue on. The allowed attempts, I'm also not gonna mess with because I can change this inside of the new quizzes settings. And then I do wanna give it a due date so that we have that due date, which is required for us to bring it into our SIS K-12 Classroom 360 gradebook later. So now I'm gonna go ahead and click Save. And when I click Save, that is when I'm going to see the new quiz builder pop up here so I can create my quiz. Across the top, you're gonna to notice that there are four separate tabs. We're gonna start on the Build tab, which is where we're gonna build out our questions. Then we'll move on to Settings. Once the quiz has started or students have had access to it, Reports and Moderate then will be important to look at. So here we can change the name of our quiz if we want. If we wanna add some instructions for kids here, we can hit the pencil icon and put in some instructions if we choose to. But this blue button down here, our little plus button is where we're gonna to click to add our content, add in our questions. So when I click this, you're gonna see all of the question types pop up here so we can choose which one we want to use for our question. Again, below this video, uh, in the description, you're gonna see a link to the help section for new quizzes. This is a great place to check out the help guides for each particular question type. So we're just gonna pick a simple multiple choice question type here. And depending on which question type you select, there's gonna be different things that you'll have to fill in. Question title is not necessary. This is just if you want some kind of way to differentiate between the questions, you can do that. Um, but our question stem is where we're going to ask our question here. Notice too, as I'm typing out, I do have a rich content editor here. So if I wanna add in links or pictures, um, I can do that. So I can have a picture up here with a question. So if I needed to include a graph or some kind of visual, I can also have pictures with the different um, possible, possible responses. So then if I just want two options, I can go over here and use my little trash can to delete possible question options. Um, I use the radio button here because it's just one answer to choose which one's correct. I can go in here and add more answers, um, vary points by answer if I want, how many points just overall is it worth? I can change that there. We're not getting again into the depths of everything you can do with this. You'll do, will notice that there is a um, item bank. So if you want to add questions that you make to an item bank so that you can later pull them into quizzes, you can do that as well. And you might've noticed the item bank buttons also up at the top there. For feedback, okay, with this particular question type, I have feedback that I can leave per possible answer, or I can click down here on this other little icon and add in feedback depending on if students get, got the correct answer, incorrect, or just overall feedback as I want. Then when I'm ready to add in my next question, I'm gonna click my plus button here and I'm gonna keep adding in my questions. So there are different question types, many auto grade, ones like essays do not auto grade. 
So I can go in here and leave an essay question as well with the essay question. And again, check out those resources in this video because every single question type has some different features with it or different things you can do. So with what this one, I could show a word count. I could set a word limit to it so they can't write too much. I can have spell checking in it. Um, kind of cool. I can put grading notes in here for me. So as I'm grading it, I can have some notes just pop up, you know, things that I'm checking for if I want. Again, I can add it to a question bank. Here's where I can leave feedback to students if I want overall feedback. So I continue to build these out. So as I finish questions, I'm just pressing done here. So as I'm building this out, I'm just pressing done here. And then this is kind of saving the questions for me. Now across the left-hand side too, I can jump from question to question. So as they get longer, it can bring me to those questions to edit them or look at them. Um, so there is a little button at the top above how many points and that'll actually bring out a little bit more. So this is where if I had the question title, I could see that there and I can rearrange these as I want. The preview button's gonna let me see what the quiz looks like for students. So it puts it in a student view. I can also take the quiz here from my sample student view and then submit it to kind of check out what the feedback's gonna look like uh, for students and it will do some auto grading. And again, this just depends on how I have the quiz set up with the settings, which we're gonna look at next. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave the preview now. And now we're ready to take a look at some settings. This is one of the cool parts about new quizzes. You have a bunch of setting options here. Shuffle questions, shuffle answer order, ask one question at a time. If you do allow one question at a time, are they allowed to go back to previous questions to check their answers? One cool thing about, uh, another cool thing about new quizzes is for students, they have the ability to click the push pin button on questions that they want to return to later. It kind of selects those questions for them. Requiring an access code that you give them at a certain time. Setting a time limit. So if they're only allowed, you know, five minutes or 10 minutes to take the quiz. Filter by IP address. That's just for when you're on campus. Show calculator. Allow multiple attempts. This one's pretty cool. You can allow, um, let's say you want to allow two attempts, but you want it to keep the highest score or the average score. You can also ask them to wait a certain amount of time bef between taking and retaking the quiz. Uh, then restrict student result view. You'll wanna turn this on if you don't want students to see how they did immediately. Um, or if there's only certain things you want them to see, you can choose that. You can go back at any time and make changes on this as well of when students can see the results. Under our reports tab, this is pretty cool. So this is where we'll see, kind of reminds me of Google form quiz results. We can see by item, we can see if we've attached to certain outcomes, we can see what those looks like, look like. Again, I've, no one's taken this quiz, so we don't have those yet. Moderate, okay, so moderate where it's is where it's going to look at every student in our class. It's gonna show the, me how many times they've taken it. It's gonna show me their score, how long, much time elapsed. It's going to show me a log of what they were up to when they were in the quiz. Um, this is also where I can set accommodations for students as well. So I can make time adjustments for students, remove time limits for them. Um, this is going to also be applied to every uh, assignment that the, the student takes that has minutes. Um, I can change it in any of my quizzes at any point. So for that student, I can make accommodations. I also have another place that I can make accommodations and that's next to the moderate button. I can add additional temps for students and make time adjustments from this tab as well if I wanna do that here. So accommodations mean, meaning that it's going to apply to all of the assignments in my class, but as I'm moderating, this is also where I can go in and give certain students uh, extra attempts and extra time. So all that's built in there. So again, we looked at how to build new quizzes. Old quizzes called classic quizzes are going away in spring of 2021. So you can always take any classic quizzes and migrate them over to new quizzes. Again, check out the resources below for that. We looked at how you go into quizzes and then you click to add a new quiz and then we select the new quizzes option. You set up your details. Then when you press save is where you get this view. Now I can leave this view by clicking return. And that's just gonna bring me then to my quizzes tab where I can see the quiz I made. Once it's made here, I can publish it. I can then go to my module and add it to the module as well. So again, this was an overview of how to use new quizzes in Canvas.